Hello everyone. Uh welcome back to another episode of Bonus Points or Ellie's Juries, which is mostly on YouTube. Um if you like this episode, please like and subscribe. If you are new here, please subscribe. We upload, upload a lot of content. Uh, follow us on all social media. We never know when Twitter is going to implode. And we like having you guys around. Uh, and if you want to listen to the entire episode, please subscribe and support us on Patreon. Uh, if you subscribe to the junior and senior tier, that's where you will get the entire episode of this podcast. And a lot of interviews and more podcast episodes and a lot of other stuff. So yeah, enjoy this enjoy this little snippet of the episode. Bye bye. Hello. <laughs> Dankeschön. Tschüss. Dankeschön. <laughs> I'm good. Let's go. Please, Sarah, tell me why you picked this gate and which one you picked. I picked today, and um, suggestion from Lois, by the way. Uh, so we picked Marjorie Lejoie and Zachary Lagarde's free free dance from 2019 the junior world championship winning free dance to Warsaw concerto um we picked this because in the past couple of days we released a written interview and a video interview with Marjorie and Zach that happened um throughout the course of the season I spoke to them at Sheffield and then after four continents and threw all that into a an article on our website and also a YouTube video was released yesterday and the Patreons can listen to the audio that was recorded in Sheffield. Yes. Our little Patreon extra. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. First of all, my first impression, I'm obsessed with her dress. I was like, yes, I love her hair. I love her dress. Everything is perfect. Um, wait, wait, wait. Fun fact. Her dress inspired a synchro's team, a synchro team's dress to look almost exactly the same as well. That's fair. I think that's fair. Uh, it should be a style. Um, I loved the opening position. It imme they immediately gave me pretty hands. I was like, yes, show me those pretty hands, those pretty ballet hands. Um, like even his hands are on point and I, I'm obsessed. And he was also giving face. I think this was the perfect program for his face. <laughs> because it was like angsty and dreadful and <laughs> emo boy. This is one where I would love to know more about this story, to be honest. Because, again, it was like a classical music piece. So I'm always like, is this just vibes only? Is there a story behind this? I cannot tell. So I'm not entirely sure. Oh. Um, and I think it's especially harder because they were juniors. They weren't getting like a lot of attention on the story. Mm -hmm. um, but I know Zach doesn't do storytelling much. <laughs> um. No, yeah. So it's vibes only. Okay, that's fair. Uh, because, but there has to be some kind of story because there was a move in those first few beats where she's putting a finger to her mouth and doing like a hushy motion, like shh. And I'm like, why? Why? What? What is happening here? What is going on? And I, I think there has to be some kind of narrative there for her to do like a shh emotion. Um. I, from the beginning, there's so much going on. I felt like immediately I had to watch it twice or three times. Uh, their movements are so big and her skirt is twirling around. The music is so intense. They are doing so much. and But it all works together very well. Like all of the elements combined, they work together perfectly. I think I'm just scared for me as like doing this commentary that I would miss a moment. So I would keep going back and repeat certain parts because I just wanted to get all of it right away. Um, and I'm just obsessed with the first few moments, like the opening pose, then the transition into that very first stationary lift. That was so well done. I watched that like three or four times because I didn't want to miss a moment. Uh, and in general, there was so much energy going on, uh, so much movement. And again, I kept, catching myself rewinding the program because I didn't want to miss a single moment. Like, what was your impression when you first saw it? Do you remember when you first saw it? Like, those first beats? I remember first watching it. So this was the first full season I started watching figure skating, um, which was their last junior season. And, of course, like, adopted them straight away. And I think they, I'd say they're still my favourite team to this day. Um, 
and I've told them such to their face and they've been like so grateful. Um, but I remember just like, is, is, I'm not a lover of classical music. So yeah. it took maybe like a competition for it to grow on me because it, classical music, a lot of classical music to me feels very the same. It's very really generic. Very often. Yeah. But, this song is on my Spotify playlist. I loved it so much. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's good built Jessica really music. well. Yeah. Um, I loved the program when I first, uh, maybe the second time I saw it. The first time I was like, let's let's see how this goes. For me personally, again, because this is Ellie's vibes only, I cannot judge technical elements. That sometimes I try to, uh, and I'm probably embarrassing myself while I'm doing that, but. I, I don't know how clean their movements are, and I think because there was so much energy and so much going on that was kind of hiding from potentially making some errors, which I don't know if it was intentional or I don't know if it was, but it worked very well, I think. Maybe there was like an aspect of nerves because it was junior yeah. worlds. I mean, again, I don't know how clean they were. I, they got great juries. They got yeah. score. And uh, also they came into the free dance leading so I, mm-hmm. that was that must have been like a huge pressure i just think it was like there was so much energy and sh- so much speed i don't know how clean you can be with so much going on especially as juniors because there's a lot going on there um he did a slide uh and uh, his, i mean there were a lot of slides i think it was a, was it a mandatory element that season was it the first time they did that First time they did that. And it's even in a video compilation on like the second or like second Instagram post. Oh, true. But I remember like there were a lot of slides, not just one, like they did yeah. two or three in the, together and individually. They really embraced the slide. <laughs> but there was one he did which matched perfectly with like the music timing. It was very subtle, 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 but I loved it. I, it was a great fit. Um, the twizzles weren't super in sync. Like the first one, he he broke out of that twizzle a bit earlier than she did, I think. Uh, but I love the creativity of them. Um, their positions doing it was just, it worked so well with the music. And I really like a creative twizzle. That's not just one emotion. Um, Oh my God. And the spin. I'm not a fan of spins. I think spins are very boring sometimes because it's just like one thing for a very long time. But it flowed so well. Again, the music, the costumes, everything was so elegant. There was one move where she's bending her back. I'm sorry, I have to cough. Where she's bending her back backwards and then extending her arms in a very dramatic way while he's holding on to her with both of his hands. And her fingers are so elegant. And it was just like such a powerful creative moment. And again, if you are watching this on YouTube, you can see it on the screen right now. But I absolutely, I loved it. Um, the one foot step sequence was so good. Everything was so smooth. They were just going from transition to transition. I'm always impressed how any skater does a one foot step sequence because I don't know how you can balance on one blade for so long doing all of these movements. How is that possible? And then I was shocked by the lack of audience. Where are the people? This was before Corona. <laughs> I think Junior Worlds never normally gets a massive audience. Unfortunately. It's probably I don't... cheaper than normal words, is it? Yeah, probably, yeah. Well, definitely, yeah. Um, they were in, I think, Zagreb, but also a lot of the audience sit, like, With the where judge- the judges are. So the opposite side looks a lot emptier than um, where the judges are normally. I think Anna said on a live stream that they should just... um invite school children to the competition and like fill the hall like it's empty anyway why would you not fill it up with people yeah. and if you invited school sh- children you might inspire them like was- i'm not saying keep them there for the entire school day but like no. a little trip out for the final group of worlds would be a fun trip and it's like it was empty when they did a wide angle i was like where are the people this is amazing why are- is nobody watching this I think it was good that the second part or like part of the second part was less energetic uh, because first of all, nobody can keep up the energy of that first minute or two minutes for four minutes. So they had a little bit of time to breathe. But also 
it worked very well as a variation of the music, like the energy, then low energy, and then energy again. I really like that. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the rotational lift, I have to say. Like, they executed it very well. I'm trying to describe it for the people who are listening to the podcast only. He, she's kind of putting her legs around his waist and he's twirling around. The koala lift, I think people started calling it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. not... It just doesn't... I don't think it worked well with the ele- elegance of the rest of the choreography. I think it's the same lift they had in their rhythm dance and they just kept it for both. I just don't think it's the most flattering position. It's not that beautiful. They are super fast on all of their spins. Uh, and they are getting in and out of those lifts so fast, and which is so impressive to me. Um, yeah, but again, I don't think it's that flattering. It just doesn't give me anything. They could have done a more powerful lift, in my opinion. Um, I think you can tell they have a lot of ballet training, ballet training, which I think a lot of skaters do. But uh, for them, it shows because their hands are so... You can tell. You can tell when somebody did ballet in the arm movements. Um, There was a moment three minutes in which I'm going to show on the YouTube video, which I really enjoyed. I think it was Zach doing some arms. And there was also like right afterwards, he was doing an amazing expression on his face. Uh, Again, emo boy. (laughs) It's like, it was a very angsty program, whatever the story was. He probably doesn't have one, but whatever it was, was very, very well executed on his face. Uh, the midline step sequence was beautiful. I wrote that down. I was very annoyed that the camera man or woman didn't catch the slide moment because I love a good slide. And they were like, camera, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it just <laughs> skipped for a second and you didn't catch the slide. And it wasn't in the slow motion afterwards. I actually, I checked. Uh, and then the ending, I very much loved the dramatic hug ending. I think everybody loved it. His heavy breathing into the neck has birthed a thousand fangirls. But maybe not a thousand, but a lot of people stand that moment. Sarah's laughing. Please, Sarah, unmute yourself so we can hear you laugh. I wasn't doing a vocal love post. <laughs> Sorry. Because people were like, oh my God, he's breathing down her neck so hard and they are hugging. They have to be a couple. And then they weren't. The story of figure skating fans. Oh my God, I hope they never listen to this. Uh, I, I can think it's so funny because... It was such an intense moment. I was looking at it and I was like, oh, I get where they are coming from. But again, nobody's dating anybody except for Mar- Marjorie, her boyfriend, Dan, or whoever his name is. Uh, Sarah's laughing once again. <laughs> uh, I didn't like the spinning movement leading into the ending. I think they could have done a better chore- choreography. Who did the choreography? Was it uh, Roman? Roman? I I would assume so, yes. Please, please think of something else. He was holding her by her arms and spinning her around. And that's not my favorite move. I've seen other skaters do it. It always feels a bit forced. Sometimes the guy has a very painted expression on his face because it's difficult to hold somebody and spin them around. Uh, And I don't think it can be done very elegantly. Uh, They could have just thought of something else in my opinion but uh, yeah overall I love the ending especially that ending post I remember we put that in in another video I think at one point um and what was your reaction to that kiss and cry reaction I did not watch it that closely but I remember he he had like a poker face right yeah Yeah. (laughs) you should oh my god after the rhythm dance he was like yep (laughs) We did yeah. That. Yep. Yeah. Cuz the past like I I didn't expect them to win this season. Yeah. I thought it was going to be um Elizabeth Okuda by Deva, if you remember mm-hmm. her, Coots, mm-hmm. um and her partner or Sophia and Igor. Um because coming into the season they weren't like winning against them mm-hmm. too. They placed fourth at the Junior Grand Prix final and then yeah, I just didn't think the momentum was going to swing that way. And I'm so happy it did because they became the um, second team to win ju- a World Junior Gold after Tessa and Scott, which I think yeah. helped boost a lot of their popularity as well. 
And if we are start talking about the costume, his costume was very much Scott's costume yeah. at the Olympics, the Olympic season. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about costumes now. Let's jump in. We'll start with costumes then. On a scale of minus five to plus five, what would you rate your costume? Their costumes. Uh, both of them costumes. Yeah. Um, again, I have talked a lot about headdress. Uh, for this music, it was absolutely perfect. The movement of the dress went so well with the music, with the choreography. I loved everything about it. I loved the color on her. It could sometimes be a bit distracting from the movement itself, in my opinion. Uh, but that's not the worst thing always. Um, and also, I think at first I was like, is this another case of her dress is beautiful and his is there? Because we know uh, very often the male costumes lack a bit compared to the female ones but in my opinion again it was very Scott Moyer 2018 Olympics reminiscent and I don't hate it when the guys have a more simpler costume in this case I like a male female dynamic where the woman is shining and the guy is just the guy is just there <laughs> Sarah's laughing uh, again. I have to just say that because we can't hear you. Um, I wasn't sure whether his pants were black and his top was dark blue. I thought it was an interesting combo. I don't know why they didn't make all of it dark blue. I'm not sure if it... It looked like his pants were black and his... I thought it was both the same. Maybe it was. I need to zoom in. We are going to zoom in on the YouTube video because I wasn't sure whether it was uh, different colors. But I love the velvet. Um, and for a hot second, I thought her skirt was velvet as well. But it turns out it was chiffon or something that was very flowy. And it still matched the velvet overall because they picked a fabric that matched very well. So yeah, I liked it. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. I really enjoyed it. It was it was a good one. It was a good one. They did well. What about the music choice? So it was Rasha Concerto by Richard Adinsel, or something like that. Um, again, we talked a lot about it. I'm not a fan of classical music. Neither is Sarah. Um, but in this case, for me, the music had so much energy. And I thought the music cut was so perfect. Uh, because I think the original one is like 10 minutes long or something. And I loved how strong it started and how strong it finished. And I just gave it a 4 out of 5. Because it didn't feel boring to me. Sometimes they can feel boring and repetitive, but this one didn't feel boring to me. Those are some pretty high scores. So I know. Overall, overall, would you give it? What really sealed the deal for me was like the slow motion recap to the dramatic motion. I was like, okay, this is amazing. Uh, everything should be in slow motion. Everything should be... It felt very theatrical, that part, when you when they did the recap. And it felt very... I don't know, like the, like a music, uh, like a movie, movie trailer or something almost. Uh, and it didn't feel like four minutes at all. It was over so fast, which is always a good sign of a good program if you don't get bored doing it. Uh, and also because of the intensity of the skate, I did not grow tired of watching them. There were so many interesting moments and movements. So yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it overall. Again, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. It's that's so far been the highest score. I cannot I cannot yet give anybody a 5 out of 5. I I have not seen enough yet. I don't know when it will happen. <laughs> Maybe I need to cry or something. Maybe I need a more emotional reaction. But I gave it a 4.5 out of 5, which is very good. They did very well. For juniors as well. Yeah, absolutely. I I will find that skate for you. I will find something that will make you give it you a You also five. need to find me one where I can go into the negative, Dewey's. Please. Well, I we'll have see. One, uh, I'm sexy and I know it, the one, you know. I I would probably, if you ever show this to me, I would be traumatized. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening, for making it through the entire commentary on this amazing skate. Um... If you like this, again, please like and subscribe. Follow us on our social media. You will find all of the links in the comments section. And yeah, please support us on Patreon if you want the entire episode. And see you next week. Bye-bye.